Well hello again. Short and sweet. I haven't done that one yesterday. This one is on my signaling systems. I have got different types of signals. I've got different types of things. But except for my dapple signal there and my water tower dapple signal dapple water tower there, everything on here is train tech. I love it. I've got different types. I've got single signals, I've got double signals, I've got three aspects over there as well, I've got dwarf signals which is this one here, that one there, that's what it looks like. It's basically that board goes underneath and there's two blocks like a, a cork, you just plug them and just push it in the hole. And then you just push the wires into the two holes there and that's it, it works. And just code it up. So what I'll show you is some of my signaling systems is the way they all work. Right, so what I've got here, I've got a set of points and I've got a signal there and a signal there. So the by rights is when the points are as they are now this is green and that is red. So if you look at the two signals now, that is green, that is red. Now if I throw the points over, like this, what happens now is that one's gone to red of course and that's gone to green because that's the correct way. But also is it because I can have trains coming this way, what it's done to the signal, it's done that so it, to go into the side in there. So if I actually click that back again, it now changes to red. That's that particular one. Now what I've got here is, of course, I've got a crossover. Now, as I said yesterday, that is where I had a signal missing, and that's it sitting there now. It's all coded up ready. I'll show you how to do that in a second. So what you've actually got here is a double-headed signal there, which is controlling that. So when I switch the points, those two there will change. change it over. But also when you think I've changed over here but that line now is blocked because of those points over there. So what you've got now is this one now is now gone to red. So that's how they actually work. So if I just Put the wall back again. Now one of the things is, is because it's on here now, you can actually see the, the lights change. Look, see all the lights change here. Now, also is if I've got this one here, if I click that one, which then changes to green, which is this one here, but remember you're coming out of there. So this line now is blocked. Now if you notice the signal now, that, that left hand one is actually red. If I just click the points back again, it changes back to green. Now two of the other systems I've actually got, one is this, is this router and one is the, the theatre there or an indicator board there. Now then, <clears throat> there's two ways of doing this one. What I've done with this one, because I can go either that way or that way, I've, the it signal is independent from the router. The router is controlled from them points there. So if I actually... these points back again 
as it should do. All right, they're not. It should be like that, right? So what I'm going to do is if I put the signal on, which is this one here, what it's actually done, it's now changed to green. But until those points there are switched, I can, I can go that way. So all I've got to do now is to click the router and there we are. So that is now for going in there. So that's, that's the way that one is controlled, like that. So the signal is independent, so it can go that way or that way. But the router shows that the points are set to go across there. That is that one. Now what I've got also, as I've said, if I just click them back again for a minute and click this to, to red, which has now gone back. Now, I'll show you this other one, this other bit in a minute, but what we've got is the, the, the theatre there. So what we've got with that one is, at the moment it's red, the way I've set that particular one up is to click those points. When I click green, that set of points and that set of points will click over and the indicator board will come on, it's ready that the train can come out on the main line. So if I actually just click this now, there's the points changed, there's the points changed. And if you look at that, there is the theatre. Now that's a half inch square unit with 25 holes in it. What you do is you put blue tack at the back of it and then poke the holes out with a pin to get what letters you want. That just says M. So that's the way that one works. So I've actually click that one back again to red. That does that. Now another little thing I've got onto my system here is my street lighting and my yard lighting works off of relays. So what I've got here is if I click this one here, what I've now got on is all my street lighting. Now if I, there's all the street lighting. Now the set of points there, as I said, goes right round the back, right over there to the turntable. The other set come into the fiddle yards here. Now what I've done with that is the relay on is controlled by them points. So if I actually click that way, all the yard lights come on. So I can operate the yard lights off that. Um, that's the way I've got those working. <clears throat> These other ones here are actually my police box and stuff like that. That's up another relay, but they all work off, off the railway system. And that's the way I operate all my stuff. Um, they work off a, a relay which is down here actually. Now if you notice uh, my alpha meter, it's showing 0.69. And that's with all them locos on and all that's all across there. So it's showing the, <coughs> the feed that I've got on the system. Now, when it comes to these little signals here, what you have to do is find the signal. Well, now, what I'm going to do is put this into, oh, it's in 100, 100 mode already. <clears throat> this, this one here and this one here are the two signals, and that's the one I want. So what you got to do is get what I do, is basically it is a paper clip bent over, and on here you'll just see two contacts underneath there. And all you do is touch the two contacts like that. If I can get it to hold steady then. It's very awkward to do it like this one-handed. There you are. There's a signal flashing. That's how you set it up. Right, it's flashing. So what you do now is click on the particular one you want, red or green. So I'll click on red. And that's done it. And then what you do is tap it again and it'll flash the second one. And that's how you do it. And it's the same as the, the router there. You click it once for the signal, 
and click it again to get that up and then you click the points and that sets that up. That's how easy these things are to set up. They're, they're no problems at all. Um, I say I, I use all the different ones in, in train tech stuff. Um, although some of it seems complicated, what I've got is also over there, I've got a, a siding with a home signal over there and then here's a distant one. Now I've, I've controlled that slightly different. See on the same principle. There, you see those two change over there and these now change. So that is now green for the siding and red for the main line. If you come round here, that is now green for the siding and amber for the body. Now, there are different signals in the system. So I'm saying the only one that isn't in the system at the moment is that indicator one. I've actually um, been in touch with Railmaster uh, uh, to have that one included in the system because it's part of the railway. So what I've got to do now is just put those back again and you see those two change and those and I can do all this in this system. Now what I'm, <coughs> what I'm going to do now I'm going to change my system over to another one which is called test plan. I can show you these more easily. Test plan. There we go. Click that. <coughs> Sorry about that. Right, now what I'm going to do now is first of all I'm going to turn these trains into one. Which I do this, click that one there, click it to one. You know, you know, that gives me all the space that I want. That's going to just reset itself. Right. So I've done some examples here. What you've got here is a crossover and a double-headed signal. That one is for the main line. This one here is for there. So if I click this one, that's green there, that is red. If we click it back again, what it's done is it's gone the other way. Why it's done that, I don't know, but it should, by rights, it should. Sometimes it's because uh, you have to let it tick a couple of times and it might change. There's something there, I'll have to sort that out and then show you. So that is that one. <coughs> now, this part here is all gone wrong because that is a red one. So what I'm going to do, just to show you, and click it back in again. You sometimes have to do this to reset them any road to get them because I've, I've changed off one plant to another plant, so it's doing that. And I'll show you some else in a second. <clears throat> Over there, you'll see some little dwarf signals. There's five of them across the back there. I had them from China. They work the same as everything else on here, except they're controlled off a relay which is a PC1 relay. The relay actually is it's two relays into one, so you can actually operate two signals. So that's in fact there's three of those relays which sit over the back there out of the way. This just take a little time sometimes to kick in. <clears throat> but say the dapple signal is totally on its own. Now the thing is, is that is about 20, I forget to say, 20 up pen. The relay for it is 40. If you had a double-headed signal like this one and the relay, it's going to cost you £95. That costs you £38. So, there we go. Let's do it now. Right, let's see if we... It might be just the way I've set it. There we are. It's worked now, look. So you have to do sometimes come out. So what we've got now is red for going that way, green for this way. If I click this one, they now change over, or should change over my right. It hasn't done it. It's most probably something in the software. I'll have a look at that in a second. What we've got here now <clears throat> is this is a home signal 
this is a distance signal. So if I click this one, that goes to amber. Click it back again to green, goes to green. And you can have a series of these. And there's the, the little one I've just shown you, which is my router. If I click this and do that, what you can do with this is actually, this will actually operate the points there. And then that'll do the router as well. This one here is a three-way aspect. So what you've got here is red. Then you've got amber. And then you've got green. You have to code them. So there's three codes in that. There's two codes in, in these others. So I'll show you how we get around this now. I'll show you how this all operates. If I now go to the track plan. to do this with this record screen. The one downstairs it's in demand but go to desk plan. Go to this one. Right, so what we've got here is that is a signal, that's a hundred, that's a hundred and one. So what you do is you right click on there and that's what you get. This is why this is why it wasn't working here. Because that comes up as 81. That's why. It should, be, it should be that about right. So what you've actually got in concept, this part here is, this part here is those two buttons there. Then you've got the signal that you want, and that is the colour that you want. So what it's saying is, is when I press the red one, signal 100 will be at green. When I press the green one, that's to come down this way, it'll go to red. And also is in signal 101, which is this one, when I press the green one, it'll go to green. And when I press the red one, it'll go to red. And that is all you've got to do with it. Now also, <clears throat> because it's a crossover, you've got to do exactly the same for this one as well. And that's why that's, why that's done that, I don't know. But anyway. So you do that one like that. Now this one here, is got nothing in but what you've got is if I think of, I don't have to put this in yeah right so what I've got there is when I so that's that and then what you do is you click that and that'll do that bit there now the three aspect one is similar type of thing as well so what you what we can do is if I just get a signal like this and we just put this over here like this. Click it on the right. Now what you've got here is all... So that you fill that bit in there, which is normal. You type, which is... One thing is, you can only do this with Railmaster Pro. You can't do it with the standard one. You have to manually do your lights or write a program to do switch the lights with points. But of course with this, you, it, it's once it's done, it's done. Thing is, those programs might not fit every loco and which way you run it. So this is why with Pro you can do all this. Normally you will only see that bit. This is the part you get with Pro. So what you've also got here is if you actually click on here, you can go from none all the way up to two aspect one way or another. This is the one with the router. So you just click that and there's your router gone on. If you click this and go there, that's a three aspect ohm. There's a there's one with, with flashing yellows as well. So there's quite different ones. They've done a good job, Real Mass, of putting all these lot in. So that is what you can do with them. Um, now, one thing I tend to do is, like here, is if this was down here, point of view, is that set of points there control that. That controls that. So if you actually look at this now, there you are. So, so what you've got there is a three aspect goes to that one. So when that's on green, that'll be on green. When that's on red, that'll go to amber. And that's how they work. Now, if you want to be... Um, check all this stuff out is if you go to your settings 
You can do it when you find this, you can do the trap line. You can look at those others as well. So if you go to trap there and go down to um, where is it? Train tech effects. No, it didn't. Sorry. Oh. Train tech signals. There, that's it. And click that. There's all the type. There's some more down here as well. Those are the, all the types of signals and the signaling systems. So what you've got here is if I click the red one there. That goes to amber, of course, and that'll be at green. When I click this one to red, don't do it properly. It's some of these work properly there. It says if I go, to, that's to the aspects. I think the so that changes that way around. That's a double, which is a green. And that's that one. Do this one here. That has now gone. To, that's the way you'd normally see them like that. And if I click the green one, what well, is because you've gone to green for this one like that. This one here will actually should go by rights to to double amber, and that goes to green. So that's all. The, and then these are the the different routers. What happens if you do it manually, if you just have the green and red, you'll actually, this little part of the light will actually switch on. So the same as that looks, see? Whereas on the, so if I go to, to red, that goes off. If I go to green, it goes to amber first, then it goes to green, that'll come on. But that's the way they all work. I have I did one last night, uh, I did a couple of people last night, one was on the locos, one with the signalling. All this I can do for you. So what, what you can actually do is, if you get in touch with me, and one thing you can do is, if I just come back up to you to find my signal, come on, where are you? Which is this, which is my trap line back again. Should be. There it is, it's back again. So as so I say, what you've got here, this is one of the little dwarf signals. And what you do there, if you click that, it goes to red, and that goes to back to green, or goes to green that way around. Now those little dwarf signals, if I come out of here for now, and just show you what I mean, those are what they are. That these are these are off eBay. When I bought these five of them, two aspects, and then nine fifty four plus that, so it's ten pound for five. So it's two pound a piece. Them things are, and all I do them attach them to a relay. They're twelve volt. Now the thing is that the relay has actually got resistors in it, so you don't need add inline resistors on them. So that's the way I do them. Now, then, as I've said with my lighting. If I just come back into here a minute, if I come up here, my street lighting is is operated through a relay, relay or RL1, but also, as I said, the sidings are done the same. Now, all my little lights you see in the buildings there and there and there and there and all those over there what they actually are are these those are them what they actually are is a bulb with a plug on the end and what i've also got sitting all under my track are these which are basically extension leads and you can plug 10 of those little lights in there there's a fuse to protect it so you just connect them there to power supply. Mine's not off the track. It works off another transformer. So I don't lose any power. And if you want to know what they are, that's what they are. The Hornby scale lighting, and that's what they are. And that's what I use. Um, thing is, is I can, say if I've got a batch of like up there, 
I've got an extension socket underneath there. There's another, perhaps another one over there. And I've got some over here as well. And that's how all my lighting in here works. It all operates off relays. So if, if anybody wants me to do their track, all they've got to do is to send me their track plan. And if they don't, can't understand how to get at it, just give me a call and I will sort it out. And then what I can actually do, as I've done with quite a few people, I will set up all the signalling to all your points. You don't, don't necessarily have to have the signals in, but on this screen here, you'll actually see them all operate to the points that you're operating to, um, which is quite easy to do. So, if anybody wants me, I'm on 01782 302194. My email address is there. Please subscribe. And don't be afraid to call me if I had anything to do with Railmaster. And I will speak to you again soon. Bye.